Let's say that you're in the market for an electric sedan, but you want something that's not as common as a Tesla Model 3. And you also don't want to pay an exuberant amount of money on something like the Lucid Air, for example. Well, might I suggest to you the all new BMW i4 as one of your options? Why? Well, let's go for a drive and find out. Unlike many of its electric vehicle competitors, the BMW i4 does not have a bespoke electric vehicle platform. It sits on the CLAR platform, that's C-L-A-R, and this is a platform that BMW designed with electric vehicles in mind, but it also utilizes gasoline powertrains and plug-in hybrid powertrains. However, the batteries are in the floor just like many other electric vehicles, and the electric motor is in the back powering the rear wheels. There is an all-wheel drive version of this i4, and that one is called the M50. It has over 500 horsepower, and it accelerates from 0 to 100 kilometers an hour in pretty much the same time as the BMW M3. However, that one is a totally different car, so getting back to this eDrive 40 version of the i4, the sole electric motor produces 335 horsepower and 317 pound-feet of torque. 0 to 100 kilometers an hour takes just 5.7 seconds or 5.5 seconds if you say 0 to 60 miles an hour, which is 96 kilometers an hour. But either way you look at it, it's still pretty brisk for this type of vehicle. The acceleration of this eDrive 40 i4 is pretty gradual when you're being gentle with the accelerator pedal. But when you put your foot down, it becomes a bit more snappy. And you can make it even snappier still if you switch the car into sport mode. Once you do that, then even the lightest throttle, sorry, not throttle, accelerator applications become very snappy. And it's also accompanied by some exotic sounds. These are BMW Iconic Sounds Electric, and they were designed by Academy Award winner Hans Zimmer. They're meant to give the car a bit more theater and a bit more drama every time that you accelerate hard. And you know what? I think that they work. They can't replace the glorious sound of a V8 or a inline six, but for an electric vehicle, I think that it's a step in the right direction. The i4 has an 81 and a half kilowatt hour lithium ion battery, which can allow this eDrive 40 version to go for up to 484 kilometers. That is depending on which wheels the car is optioned with. The 484 kilometer range is with the standard 18 inch wheels. With any other optional 19 inch wheels, the i4's range drops to 454 kilometers. The battery can be recharged in as little as 31 minutes from 10% to 80% with a 200 kilowatt DC charger. From a more common 50 kilowatt charger, the same charge can be achieved in little over an hour. Level 2 AC charging is maxed at 11 kilowatts, and the i4 can be fully recharged from 0% to 100% in just over 8 hours. Expect around 13 hours for the same charge from a 7.4 kilowatt charger. The BMW i4 has a few different modes for regen braking. There's low, mid, and high, and they obviously change the amount of regen braking that you have every time that you lift your foot off the accelerator pedal. However, they are not one pedal drive modes. You still have to use the brake pedal for that last little bit, especially in the high mode. In low mode, you pretty much use it all the time. But if you do want a one pedal drive mode, then all you have to do is simply shift the drive mode selector into B and then it becomes a true one pedal drive mode and it will actually bring the car to a complete stop. There is also one more regen braking mode that I almost forgot to mention and that is adaptive. This mode uses the car sensors to detect other vehicles and the GPS system to determine where the car is. For example, if there's a vehicle in front of the i4 and it's being driven in a city, the adaptive regen mode will provide more regenerative braking. 
If you're driving the i4 on a rural road, it will provide less regen braking. I don't really like this system because it's inconsistent. It works as it's intended, but the regen braking is never the same. I just leave it in the mid mode and use the physical brakes to come to a complete stop. Speaking of which, the standard brakes feel normal. There's no weird transition between regen braking and the physical brakes. The brake pedal is firm when pressing hard on it, but it has enough travel to allow it for smooth stops. It feels just like a normal BMW gas vehicle. As for the driving dynamics of this i4 eDrive 40, it's not an M car and it's not even an M performance car. The steering is a little bit slower, however, you can opt for a faster steering. And the suspension does allow for a bit more body roll than in, again, M performance cars or even M cars. But this model of the i4 is meant to be more of a daily commuter. And in a city environment, this thing is really comfortable. The rear of the i4 sits on air springs, but it's only the rear that gets it. Also, there's no driver adjustment for the ride height. You can opt for adaptive M suspension should you want a bit more body control and a slightly firmer ride. For a BMW vehicle, this i4 eDrive 40 is a great daily driver. The semi-air suspension smooths out bumps in the road, even with the optional 19-inch wheels. As well, because the i4 does not have a traditional powertrain, it is smooth, even more so on freshly paved asphalt. It feels as though you're in a plane. The interior of the i4 is pretty much the same size as the 4 Series that this is based on. So the front seats have plenty of space for adults, even ones that are as tall as myself at 6 foot 4. And I really can't complain because legroom is just fine and so is headroom. Mind you, this seat is at its lowest position. But I can move the seat further back if I want even more space. In the back seats though, it is a totally different story. Behind my driving position, it is very, very tight. Now again, I am above average in height, so please keep that in mind. But even somebody that's a bit more average in height probably won't want to be there for very long. Those outboard seats can be heated. There is a separate climate zone in the back and the backrest can fold 40-20-40 so you can have longer items in the trunk and still have enough space for two rear occupants. Speaking of the trunk, the i4 is a grand coupe which means that the cargo area has a hatchback design. The cargo capacity with the rear seats up is 470 liters but with the rear seats folded the i4 has 1290 liters of cargo space. There is a little bit of storage underneath the floor, but it's barely just big enough to fit the charging cable. Also, when you open the hood, you will find a big plastic piece with BMW written on it. Lift up that piece and you will find a large void. BMW could have added a small storage compartment for this eDrive 40 version of the i4. Even Kia added a small 24 liter compartment under the hood, so why couldn't BMW do the same? But back here in the front, the design is really similar to the standard 4 series. However, this being an all new model and a full electric model, there are some differences. So obviously the biggest thing that's going to catch your eye is this curved screen, which is actually consisting of two separate screens. So the driver display is a little bit smaller than the infotainment touchscreen, but they are both crystal clear. The infotainment system is the latest generation of iDrive and some parts of it are similar to the previous generation but a lot of it is brand new and it does feel a bit daunting at first when you start to use it. Happily however, it is very customizable. So on the home screen you have widgets that you can add, remove or reorganize. If you swipe down then you can get a notifications tab. And if you click on the menu button, then you get all of the apps, but you can hold and rearrange them like as though it's a smartphone. Also, it does have wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto, and both of those systems work really well. There's no connection issues between the system and my phone, and they run really smoothly. My only gripe with this infotainment system is that the climate controls are now built into the infotainment system. And for me personally, it's a little bit distracting to use climate controls that are built into an infotainment system when you're driving. 
personally, I prefer physical buttons. You can control certain features of this infotainment system and as well the climate through voice commands, but from time to time it does get a few commands wrong. Underneath events, like I said, no more climate control buttons. All you have is a capacitive touch button for your hazards, your front and rear defrosters, a volume knob, and your tuning. But everything else on the center console is as you know it from a BMW 4 Series. Cup holders, wireless phone charging, iDrive controller, and push button start, it's all here. Another small difference between this and the gasoline versions is that with the gear selector, you no longer have a manual gear shift mode because, well, it doesn't have a transmission. So instead of switching it to manual mode, instead what you do is switch it into one pedal drive mode or B as it's labeled here. But other than that, everything else is really similar to a 4 Series. Same steering wheel, like I said, same center console, same door controls, same window controls. It's familiar. The 2022 BMW i4 eDrive 40 starts at a smidge under $55,000 Canadian, with this demo vehicle being equipped to $71,890 Canadian. The BMW i4 is eligible for government rebates and tax incentives, so check your local dealer for details. I should also mention that for the 2023 model year here in Canada, the eDrive 35 version of the i4 was announced, and it has a starting price of $54,990 Canadian. The 2023 i4 eDrive 40 starting price has been bumped up to $61,390 Canadian. For that base price, you're not really getting a whole lot of features with this new i4. There is leatherette upholstery, the dual screens, which by the way, forgot to mention, the driver display is 12.3 inches and the infotainment display is 14.9 inches. Again, the infotainment does have wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto. There's also a power lift gate, push button start, keyless entry, and that's about it really. If you want some meaningful gadgets, then be prepared to pay quite a bit. This particular car has almost $17,000 in options. Some of the gadgets that you'll get are heated seats, heated steering wheel, a head up display, surround view cameras, parking sensors, backup assist, which will actually remember the last few meters of any forward maneuver and then reverse in that exact same manner. This car also has wireless phone charging, ambient lighting, 19 inch alloy wheels, and a Harman Kardon sound system, which isn't quite as nice sounding as the Bowers and Wilkin sound system that I experienced in the BMW iX, which I reviewed not too long ago, and you can check it out up here if you're interested. But this sound system does also have a sort of demo mode, which BMW calls experience the sound, and have a listen. So, like I said, if you want any meaningful gadgets with this BMW i4, then be prepared to pay a little bit extra. The i4 has no need for a traditional grille or exhaust pipes, and as such, it doesn't have any. The grille is still the controversial design from last year's 4 Series, and the exhaust pipes are replaced by a subtle diffuser. The styling is not to everyone's taste, but at least it does look more interesting than the egg that is the Tesla Model 3. The IIHS and the NHTSA have not yet crash tested the i4, but Euro NCAP has, and it gave the car a 4 out of 5 star safety rating. In base form, the i4 has forward collision alert, front and side airbags, and intelligent emergency call. That's it. 
To get advanced safety and driver aids, you have to opt for the premium essentials package, which includes automatic emergency braking, lane departure warning, blind spot sensors, speed limit info, cross traffic alert, and rear collision prevention. For more driver and safety aids, you can opt for the advanced driver assistance package, which includes adaptive cruise control with stop go function, lane keep, lane change assist, front cross traffic alert, and evasive steering assist. The 2022 BMW i4 eDrive 40 is covered by a 4-year 80,000 km new vehicle warranty, just like any other new BMW model. The battery pack is covered by an 8-year or 160,000 km warranty, whichever comes first. So although this eDrive 40 version of the i4 is not really one of the best driving BMWs out there, you're probably not going to be looking at this car either way if that's what you're after. The M50 version of this or even the full-on M3 or M4 are the ones that you're probably going to be looking at. This one is more of a daily commuter type of vehicle and it is really good at that. The electronic drivetrain is way smoother than the smoothest gasoline powertrain that BMW makes. It has pretty much the same types of gadgets as the standard 4 series and it is eligible for government rebates and tax credits. Plus, on top of all that, I think it looks much more interesting than those Tesla eggs that you see all over the place. I know this grill is not to everyone's taste, but I am so sick and tired of seeing Tesla Model 3s. That's just me though. Anyway, if you want to know more about this 2022 BMW i4 e Drive 40, I wrote a more detailed review of it over on my website. You can find that link in the video description or click on the pop-up banner right up there. And as always, I will see you in the next car or truck or most likely it'll probably be an SUV. Anyway, thank you for watching. Please like and follow and I'll see you in the next video.